Hello, my beautiful patrons. It is me, it is Queen Aset Haru, and I want to thank you for coming and checking out this edition of The Witch Trials. And as you know, it is because of your generous contributions that I'm able to um, have some extra leeway when it comes to getting things from my channel, such as subscription boxes or new pillows or new wall tapestries. So I wanna thank you guys because you sponsor my channel and you sponsor me being able to make more content and do fun videos. So today we're gonna to talk about this episode of The Witch Trials. I put Bell Witch Hauntings on trial. So let me tell you a little bit about this. The Bell Witch seems to be a franchise. There are several different movies, all with the title Bell Witch in it some kind of way. Now, when I first saw this, um, this movie in particular is from 2014, and I think some of the other ones were from before that. Now, when I first saw this, the first thing that came to my mind, as some of you are probably thinking, Blair Witch. It's just like Blair Witch, except this is based on a house instead of the woods. Blair Witch did have a house in it, but it's like an afterthought. Most of the time you spend in the woods following these crazy clues um, with, a, with a shaky camera. <laughs> For this one, you find yourself in a house with a shaky camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a little bit about the movie and then I'm going to tell you its virtues and vices. So basically, this really nice couple and there are two kids, a boy and a girl, and they're like teenagers. They move into this gorgeous house. And of course, they find out this gorgeous house is haunted and it's haunted by this bell witch. Now, apparently she kills anybody who lives on the property or whatever the case is. So the entire movie as you're watching it, is being shot from different members of the household. The oldest son has a camera. The electrician who gets killed uh, has a YouTube channel, and he's like, you know, taping for YouTube and dies on camera. Um, the sister has a YouTube channel. So it's like everybody has like cameras and they're recording for their own purposes. But in the background, they keep on catching all this paranormal activity. At the end of the movie, everybody's dead, of course. The, the witch has killed everybody. And um, one person's body is missing. And I think the one person that made it alive is the daughter. And she's forever in an asylum. And so crazy, she can't talk about what happened. Or, you know, she just snaps. So, honestly, this movie is not the best. It, it wasn't... It, it really wasn't scary. It didn't scare me at all. Like, and I'm a scaredy cat, you know? When I watch movies, I'm always like, uh, you know, I'm always scared. I was scared of Blair Witch, but I was not scared of this. And the whole Blair Witch wasn't scary, but there were parts when I did jump. I didn't jump at all. This didn't scare me at all. And that's hard for me. So... This movie, um, was, it failed in that area. And then it failed as far as plot concerned. I mean, it was the same old plot that we've seen time and time again. And guess what? There's no real witchcraft. I mean, none. There's none. I have no witchcraft <laughs> on this paper to report to you. But what I do have is paranormal activity. So we're going to talk about that. And basically what it is, is that um, there's all this paranormal stuff going on and those are going to be my virtues and I have a couple of vices, things that could not possibly ever happen. And um, like I said, the biggest thing about this movie is that there is no witchcraft at all. So I can give it an F up front because there's no witchcraft. I mean, literally no, no potions, no herbs, no, no crystal balls. I mean, nothing. There's nothing at all. There's just this woman who's supposed to be a 500 year old witch who's still walking around eating people and doing all kinds of stuff. So, um, like I said, what we're going to talk about is the paranormal activity. Because the one thing that I did notice, and that's why I made them virtues, is that this movie has 20 actual things that could happen in a paranormal situation. 
So if somebody's house is being haunted, they could experience these things. So even though it's not real witchcraft, it is real supernatural. I'll call it supernatural activity. Paranormal activity is real. Now, generally, a person doesn't have this many at the same time, but we'll get to that part later. So let me tell you all of the paranormal activity that went on in this movie. First of all, in the very beginning, there's a young girl. Her name is Lynn. Lynn is suddenly possessed in the middle of a party. When the movie opens up, they're all at this party. They're drinking. It's like a, you know, like the, the older brother's birthday. So the parents are letting them have a little bit of beer and they're sneaking the smoke weed behind the house. It's one of them kind of teeny bopper parties, you know? So, um... One of the guests, her name is Lynn, she is clearly possessed by something in the first like four minutes of the movie. And she's just standing there like, <laughs> you know, and you're like, what's wrong with Lynn? So they think Lynn is drunk because they've been drinking. So um, what happens is, is that Lynn's boyfriend or male friend or whatever the case is, says, OK, I'll take Lynn home. So the first thing is that Lynn is possessed by something. A lot of people who have hauntings and possessions experience this for moments or longer moments or whatever the case is. Two, Lynn and her boyfriend die on their way home. There have been cases where somebody has um, crashed their car or had an accident or something like that and people would blame it on paranormal activity. Uh, I don't think they can really prove it, but I've heard many, many, many cases of people saying there was an accident and they knew it was paranormal activity. Um, other things that were happening that were cliche and do actually happen. Books falling, closets opening on their own, and night terrors. The older sister, the only sister, was having horrible night terrors throughout the movie. And according to the ending of the movie, still has them. So that's something that never went away. And that's very common. Um, they found a dead animal in the woods. I've seen more than one paranormal story where they talked about finding a dead animal or something dead. You know, and it's kind of like this omen, this bad omen of doom. So I've heard about that many times. Then there was this scratching. So many hauntings, especially hauntings that involve some kind of demonic activity, which is more than just a haunting. That takes it up <laughs> that takes it up quite a step. You either have human spirits or you have non-human entities. And the non-human ones are the demonic ones, and often they're accused of scratching. You hear them scratching. You know, the person will tell you they keep hearing scratching in the walls or scratching in the ceiling or something like that. So that's a very another very common one. Um, they kept picking up apparitions on cam. Remember, I said they had their cam, so they kept on picking up apparitions on cam. Um, something would flash by real quick, and you're like, "What is that?" You know, stuff like that. So they kept picking up on things, and a lot of times in these kinds of cases, that does happen. It'd be something flashing by, or something moving and you can't quite catch what exactly it is um seeing footprints uh at one point he got trapped in the basement and he turned around and something he had kicked over he had kicked over a bucket of water and when he turned around he saw footprints go into the back of the basement and i've heard more than one story about this happening before Hearing strange noises and voices on the CD player. Sometimes people who are in these situations will hear the spirits talking. In this case, it was telling them to get out of the house. It was like, get out, get out of my house, that kind of thing. But usually they hear like whispers. They can't quite make them out, you know, and on the radio, or on the baby monitor or anything that has a frequency. Um, so they'll hear noises, they'll hear voices, they'll hear, you know, strange things like, what is that? And then you go into the room and there's nothing there. They were hearing it on the CD player, like it was scratching, making noises. And we all know CD players don't work like that. You pop in a CD, you hit the button and it plays. 
but for some reason with theirs they kept hearing these growling noises and things like that and this is something that has been reported in many hauntings also um there was a girl found dead in the woods um one of their friends came over to spend the night and she left because she was terrified of the paranormal activity so she left and later they found her hanging from a tree and it was like implied that she had been murdered or she had hung herself and there have been other cases of hauntings where somebody turns up dead um unknown how you know could have been a suicide but it's like what drove them to suicide and sometimes the family will say it was the haunting that drove them to suicide um then there were blemishes on photos of the older sister sometimes in hauntings you'll look at pictures of the family and you'll see blemishes and in this movie there were blemishes but only over one family member the one who ends up living and going crazy the sister and there were all these blemishes over her face and old photos that weren't there before after they moved into this house and the mother was like, oh, maybe it's water damage. Maybe, you know, it's moisture, you know. Um, she was thinking of all these things it could be. But it was like, why is it only her, only her in the picture and nobody else's face is blurry? So it was very suspicious and a lot of hauntings report something like this. Plumbing problems. Now, this could be plumbing problems. Um, and later on, we're going to see some problems with the electricity, too. Hauntings often have these problems. And one of the things that happens is the lights will flicker. Um, plumbing will stop working or it'll get backed up or it'll act strange. And they'll call in a professional and nothing's wrong. Plumbing's fine. Electricity is fine. No reason why it's, it's doing that. So a lot of times these situations happen and the first thing you do is try to see if there's like a normal cause for it you know they call it debunking so the first thing they do is try to see if any of these things are happening because of something that's not paranormal such as a short in the circuit box and in this movie they tried to you know do that first and it was nothing wrong with the house uh, so, yeah, then the other thing was blankets, levitating, and trapping the girls. They're in the bed, the two girls, the, the, the uh, sister and her best friend spent the night. I don't know why her friends kept spending the night. Because <laughs> I would have never spent the night at her place, man. But anyway, another friend spends the night, and the blanket, like, levitates off the bed and, like, traps them underneath the bed. Now, I have heard cases of blankets not levitating, though. I've never heard that. I've heard of blankets pulling off the person repeatedly at night. Um, I've heard of blankets like the person waking up and the blanket totally over them. And when they went to sleep, the blanket was not, might have not, been at the bottom of the bed or just up to their waist. So some of the times it's believed that these spirits, these entities can move the blankets, move the sheets, and they do it to kind of like, you know, fuck with the living, <laughs> basically, you know? So this is another one that's commonly reported. Now, in this case, I thought it was a little bit, um, it is a little bit exaggerated because the blanket levitated and then came back down to the bed. And you don't usually hear about the levitating part. You usually just hear about it getting pulled off or pulled up. Then um, the electrician got electrocuted on cam. Um, this was interesting because I mentioned this because, I mean, of course, anybody can get electrocuted. Um, but it seemed to be interesting that the electrician, who also was making a YouTube video, got electrocuted on camera. So this could happen to anybody for any reason that are not even paranormal. But I just thought it was interesting in his case because some people have had issues like that. Not so much getting killed, but getting shocked or something like that in a house that is being accused of being haunted. Um, 
it was interesting because all these family members were making YouTube videos and the electrician was doing his YouTube thing. I thought that was really kind of cool and really a nod to the times, you know, because the sister had like a beauty YouTube channel and she was showing like her outfits and stuff. And I just laughed because it reminded me so much of being on YouTube. Um, the daughter got possessed and um kind of like when lynn got possessed like she was just out of it and she got possessed more than once and was just out of it and that is something that does happen they kept hearing whispers in the woods whenever people are in what they consider to be haunted woods they reported hearing footsteps stepping on twigs and i'm breaking whispering that kind of thing and they're not sure if it's the wind, if it's an animal, if it's a bear, if it's a wolf, but they hear all these things and many of them report these types of activities. Um, then the dad was sleepwalking. Along with night terrors, a lot of people who were victims of paranormal activity report sleepwalking. They find themselves in all places of the house or outside of the house with no recollection of how they got there. And sometimes they've gone pretty far, you know, and, you know, people do sleepwalk. Sleepwalking is something that happens. I don't know why it happens, but some people say it does happen. But these people have never slept, <laughs> sleepwalked before. They've never had a problem with any kind of sleep problems or insomnia. And out of the clear blue sky, all of a sudden they move into a haunted house and now they're sleepwalking. So some people think they're being possessed by the spirit and is walking around in their body. So I don't know how true that is, but it is commonly reported. Animals reacting. Every time something happened, the animals started barking and going off, you know. Um, the only animal that didn't seem to really respond violently was their dog, <laughs> actually. But all the animals in the neighborhood were like tripping as soon as the witch, because the witch at one point walked, you know, from the woods into the house and all the animals in the neighborhood were just barking and tripping. And animals are said to pick up on paranormal activity. And a lot of times cats, dogs, uh, especially, are said to know and feel and be able to, you know, see even these things. Um, there was an exorcism. They called a priest, of course, which is always the smartest thing to do. I'm going to tell you straight up, call a Catholic priest because the Catholics do exorcisms all the time. They won't always admit it, but it's documented well documented that they still to this day do exorcisms a few um outside of the vatican a few uh i'm not sure how, like i'm not going to give you a number but from what i was told they do a few whatever that means outside of the vatican but most of them are done right there in italy so you can google that and you know fact check that but it's been going on since the beginning of time so they call the priest and the daughter gets possessed during the exorcism, which does frequently occur. Um, the, they'll start to, when in this kind of possession, it's not just like, you know, being out of it, but they're screaming, they're spitting. Uh, they'll, in this case, she was levitating. I've never heard of a person actually levitating, but I think it can actually happen depending upon what level of entity we're talking about. But yeah, she was levitating and then she took the priest by his neck and snapped his neck and threw him so um some of the times i haven't heard about priests dying but i have heard about priests getting I, i've heard rumors of priests dying put it like that but i've never seen documentation but i have seen documentation of of priests or holy people getting injured during these exorcisms and um yeah she levitates she throws up and she kills the priest that was the last part so all those things can happen the levitation part as far as her like flying in the air and picking him up eh, usually it doesn't happen like that usually from what i've read they attack the priest they might knock him down bite him spit on him you know harm them in those kind of ways may even be able to kill him like that actually 
But um, as far as levitating, snapping his neck and throwing him, I haven't heard too many of those. I think that was more for effect. So, yeah, so a couple of things were a little exaggerated, but these are things that can actually occur in their normal form. Now, what vices happen? What things can never happen? Well, um, the witch murders some people in the woods. Um, the one that was hanging in the woods, I think that she could have been driven to suicide. Um, Lynn, who was possessed in the very beginning, her and her boyfriend, uh, they got into a car accident. So that po they possibly could have happened. But when she killed Colby and another guy, it just wasn't believable. I mean, she came out of nowhere and just kind of swooped in, grabbed him, snapped his neck and threw him. It doesn't usually work like that with this type of a haunting, even if it is a demon. Usually it's something that they drive the person to do or they do something like in the case of the accident that caused an accident to occur. They don't usually just go off and kill people wandering around in the woods. So... Um, that was one thing that I had to vice because that was extremely exaggerated. The other thing that I had to vice was the father was like throwing up blood and that was totally special effects because in these types of um, hauntings or these types of demonic possessions, whatever it was, I'm not sure which one it was. They don't tell you she's a human spirit, but they don't tell you like what she is. And when I Googled it, it said that she's a demonic spirit. So I'm like, well, was she a woman or was she a demon? Like, you know, human spirits are usually people who lived and demons are usually entities that never had a human life. So I couldn't get an answer to which one was she because at different points, she's called both basically. So I couldn't get which one she really was. So um, a lot of times they like, you know, during these kind of things, you will see throwing up, you will, but it's usually not throwing up blood. You usually see them throwing up food or stuff like that because throwing up blood is more like, like where the blood come from? <laughs> like where did this blood come from? Was the dad like drinking blood or something in the woods? And that could have been the case too, but they didn't show it. Because at one point, the, the daughter was found in the woods eating a raccoon. She was possessed by the witch and she was literally eating a dead raccoon. So maybe the father did something similar and that's why he was throwing up. And that could be the case. I've never heard anything as extreme as somebody eating a, a raccoon under a possession. So that's something else that could be a vice as well, because that it sounds like another exaggeration. And the throwing up of the blood would be another exaggeration. Um, her eating the live raccoon was so gross. You know, those things are serious exaggerations. So we have one, two, three, four major exaggerations. 20 things that could actually have happened and out of those 20 that could have actually have happened three or four of them were a little exaggerated so overall the movie got the the paranormal activity correct i would have to give them a i would probably give them a b plus for the paranormal activity but this is the witch trials so let's talk about the witchcraft there is none, like I said before. There's none. You see this witch do no witchcraft. The only thing that she does is she's immortal. And witches really can't do that. So the one thing that can be associated with witchcraft is something that's fake. We cannot live immortally. I wish I could, to be honest with you. I would love to be an immortal because I would spend my lifetime just seeing everything going everywhere i would see every country i would hang in every country for years at a time get to know the language get to know the culture the food the people and then move on to the next country I, it would probably take me two or three thousand years before i would get bored you know i would just enjoy and ingest everything every food, every color, every genre, you know, read books I never even thought about, you know, see movies from the 1920s when, you know, when silent films first came out. I mean, I would just pack that, that those thousands of years was so much. But unfortunately, unless the witches aren't letting me in on it, immortality is not something we can do. So the only thing that the witch did do was one stereotypical thing that is fiction <laughs> that never actually happens. 
So, like I said before, this movie was not very good as far as being interesting or having a good plot or things like that. It was a couple parts that, you know, made me go, uh, you know, but for the most part, it wasn't great. Um, that's probably why I never heard of this Bell Witch series and, um, I can see because I just kind of skipped it. And like I said, it's very much like Blair Witch because they're constantly using those shaky cameras to, you know, film the entire movie. Um, cause you're seeing it through somebody's point of view every single time. And some of the times the camera is just on and you're seeing the paranormal things happen in the background. So like when the witch, when you see the witch, she comes walking up and she just walks past the camera and they had like a surveillance camera. So you got to see her, like her face, her hair, everything. And the one thing I can say is that the witch wasn't a monster. And Blair Witch, the witch is a monster. She's like 10 feet tall, long arms like trees. You know, you don't even get, I didn't even get to see her. I only saw two Blair Witch movies and there were other ones. And I never got to really see her see her. You just see her shadow and she looks like a monster. This witch looked like a woman, a regular old woman. Um, just with creepy eyes, <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, so that's the Bell Witch Hauntings in 2013. As far as witchcraft is concerned, it gets an F. As far as paranormal activity is concerned, I'll give it a B plus. Um, if you're bored and you want to watch something about witches, this is not the move. If you're bored and you like paranormal activity, you find it to be interesting, you can watch this, but I'm sure there are other paranormal movies that are probably better. Like I saw one once before called Paranormal Activity, and that one wasn't great, but it was better than this. <laughs> it was much better than this. Okay, so that is this week's episode of The Witch Trials. This movie gets burned <laughs> at the stake, okay? So thank you guys for being here. Um, I have a long list of movies. Come back next week and I'll tell you about another one. Is it going to be a flop or is it going to be an A plus? We'll find out next week, now won't we? See you later. <laughs>